Hello everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I want to talk about a topic I've kind of touched on before and I've wanted to talk about again and more in depth for quite some time, but wasn't quite sure how to tackle it, and that is grieving a book. We don't talk about this a lot because, I mean, generally we don't talk about grief a lot, but especially, I mean, it's way nicer to glass over some of the more negative aspects of publishing or, or just creative life. I think this happens in creative life, period. Essentially where you have poured a lot of yourself and time and energy and soul into something and then it doesn't necessarily go the way you wanted it to and you have to grieve that thing, grieve the reality of how things pan out versus your hopes, your expectations. And like, how, how, how do you deal with that? How do you move on? And this, this is a multifaceted topic. I'm gonna talk about some examples. It's not kind of a one size fits all thing. I will speak about some of my personal experiences, which may or may not apply to you, but I wanted to be more like open about this topic. Ironically, looking very, very cheerful. I just haven't worn this this is like my celebration top. You know, maybe this is all about being positive <laughs> as we talk about these things. Much easier as I have a little more distance from at least one of the things I'm going to talk about with this topic. And also, uh, I got a new Pat McGrath palette, so I was like, we're doing sparkly, so... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I'd done makeup and clothes to match the mood, would have been very, very emo. <laughs> I do want to differentiate between what I'll call like acute book grief, which we're going to talk about, and general book grief, because it is normal to kind of emotionally move on from a book once you are done with it and put it out into the universe. But they're kind of, there's the normal emotional distance and moving on process, provided more or less things go semi-normally or okay, and there's more acute grief which I'm going to talk about. And even calling it that, you're like, what happened to your book? That, I'm gonna talk all about feelings, but generally speaking, sometimes you really can't explain the feelings that might come up with a book and a situation. And I mostly want to normalize that you might experience acute book grief for the weirdest of reasons that I might not even cover and it might hit you unexpectedly. And I just want to talk candidly about that. So what are some of the situations that I mean when you have to more acutely grieve a book? when you query a book and you don't get an agent for it and you realize that the best thing for you to do is shelve it. You have to move on from that project because it's it's not going to get you where you want it to be. Similarly, you get an agent, you go on submission and it doesn't sell to a publisher. This can happen once, twice, and I would say the grief is compounded if it does happen more than once and it's, it's devastating. But it happens on the published side as well. This can be when your publisher buries your book. Like you, you're not even mid-tier, you're bottom tier. You're not even assigned a publicist. It's very obvious to you that the publisher isn't going to do much. You get a bad cover and you are released to little fanfare. This could even be like, you don't even get pick up in Barnes and Noble. That's something specific that can happen that would definitely require a level of grief. It can be the hopes that you pinned onto a book to be your breakout book, whether it's your debut or otherwise, and it just doesn't happen. And you watch your book slowly but surely fade from the public consciousness, often shockingly fast, and it just sets in that like, if a tree falls in the wood and no one hears it, if a book is published and it feels like no one notices or reads it, were you published? Yes, you were, but you're going to have feelings about it. If you're critically panned, you get really bad reviews and readers don't seem to like it either. It's depressing, it's upsetting, and it's a book that you have to figure out how to move on from, to grieve and grow from. This is like a semi-personal one where it's a book that was really hard to write and you worked hard on and you think it's better than other books of yours, you're really proud of it, and it's your lowest rated one on Goodreads. This is like kind of like critically panned. It's where the reader response to a book that you feel really strongly about and proud of just doesn't match. And so it's grieving the idea that a book that you thought was your best work, the readers don't agree. Another one, and this, this kind of can relate to the whole like not breaking out or like it not publishing the way that you had hoped it would, 
someone else has a similar premise and they just absolutely bury you. Uh, that can is often timing, like it's released in a similar timeline, or even just it's so ubiquitous and it does well and it no one pays attention to your book. Or even, you know, this is a more down the line grief of moving on from a book that has been published. It goes out of print slash is remaindered. And you'd be shocked how quickly this can happen. Two, three years after a book comes out, you find out it's going out of print. And, and that's it, especially when it's like your hardcover format, you're not getting a paperback. It's just you have to face the reality that in a year or so, no one will be physically able to buy that book. In many ways, that is like a death. And actually, I'll also say another one, it's like a little grief uh, that comes under that. The first time you realize that you've been weeded from bookstores and libraries, it's usually bookstores before libraries, but that feeling that it's only been X number of months and you're no longer on bookshelves. Oh, well, we're getting into our feelings. And then some real life, real life things can impact the you grieving a book. I have experienced two of these personally, <laughs> which is obviously where these came from. So, uh, I mean, I've shared this before. When a loved one dies <laughs> and they never got to see your book, that can really color how you experience the publication of a book. Hopefully not all books from then on. I mean, personally, it gets better. I have felt it gets better, but this for me was my second book. Just that it was like this long, slow feelings process of my mother never got to read it. <sighs> I won't cry, I promise. I cried the last time I talked about this when it was a lot more fresh, that my mother never got to read it, certainly never got to see it published. And I feel fortunate that said that she did get to read and experience the publication of my first book, but that second book that I was more proud of, uh, like, and it was just like, ugh, the arc came out and I got her an arc just when she was getting too sick to read it. And it's just, you sit with that forever. And that's, that's just really rough and it's a very particular kind of grief for a book in that sense because it has nothing to do with anything else that might happen with that book. It, it's just the feelings bomb of like, it's grief wrapped in grief and I personally found that my grief over my mother, all the grief, was compounded by this grief and I've talked about it before, it literally ruined my experience of the release of this book. But speaking of things ruining the experience of the release of that book, and this is one that a lot of people can relate to. Um, let's say your book is published during a worldwide pandemic. So pretty much every author you know who had a book come out in 2020, plus a lot of the books in 2021, um, experience this where you have to grieve what might have been in terms of what you had hoped for your release experience. It's all the authors who didn't get to do an in-person event for their book. I feel especially terrible for the debuts because I at least was able to go it sucks. I had to cancel all of the events I had scheduled, which of course, coincidentally, were all supposed to be right when lockdown started. The irony being that I hadn't done any for release because I was depressed about my mom. This is me personally, but at least I had a debut experience to compare it to. I had a pretty ideal debut experience. Just think about every single debut who didn't get what they had hoped for for their publication and debut experience in 2020 and into 2021. There's a grief there that you have to account for of you just all your those authors will always grieve the debut experience they did not get. So those are just some examples. There are many other things that can you know lead to having to grieve a book. Which brings me to like just like all the feelings. They're really weird. <laughs> And I just want to acknowledge that up front. They're really weird and they're weird to feel and they're very weird to share. And in most cases, most of us don't share them. That's why I'm talking about this because it's this very taboo thing to admit that you are disappointed, upset, or grieving some aspect of your book coming out or publication journey, whatever that is relative to you. Obviously, the, the easiest is many people have had to grieve a book in querying and so it's a lot easier to be open about that because no one's going to like 
begrudge you being upset about that because it's relatable but people share a lot less when it's your book dies on sub because then it's like well you shouldn't complain you have an agent you're doing better than other people let alone complaining about the experience of a book being published because it's like you ungrateful thing and so it makes it more compl the feelings weirder and more complex but your feelings are completely legitimate i am here to legitimize you and your feelings and they can come out of nowhere i, ha I had a very legitimate reason to be have like a grief spiral about my second book because of my mom but it still like hit me where i was like this is just the weirdest feeling that i'm not happy about my book coming out I was dreading it. I opted out of like that week it came out I did as little as possible because that's what I emotionally needed to do. So you're gonna have weird feelings and you need to do whatever you need to do with those feelings and the sucky it's both good and sucky you for the most part we have to do it privately because there can be such weird pushback from people if you dare to express these sorts of emotions and feelings but i'm here if you are an author on any side of this but especially if you have been published and felt this you are not alone and you are not ungrateful because you had a weird experience grieving a book that came out I also personally find, and this isn't to kind of play Oppression Olympics with anyone, but I personally have found that my feelings pre-publication versus post-publication of grief of grieving books, because I've done it on both sides, very different. But that said also, I only have, I have not quite two years of distance from the book that I consider the book that I had to grieve, The Stars of Steel. My second book came out in February 2020, the one very emotionally in my mind attached to my mother's death. Though I have different grief over the ivies which is a whole <laughs> the ivies being the last book i pitched to my mom like and she was so excited for it and so proud i had a different grief cycle on that i think because i'd been through it before and also i was then in a process of i've been able to work out my literal grief in the writing it, it, it i guess overall it does get better but the difference for me between having to shelve a book because it failed on sub and having to shelve a book because it failed at queries, I have experienced both of those things. Um, especially if you move forward from that and then you do sell a book. You get an agent, you sell a book. You're, you're able to move on because you then had good things happen and you kind of achieved what you wanted to achieve. And I am able to look back on those books that I did grieve at the time and it was upsetting at the time and go, oh, it was all for the better. I see why those didn't work. I'm so glad I picked myself up from that and grew. And I guess maybe in five years, if you check in on me, maybe I'll feel that way about this, but I don't think so because I think there's a, like I said, there's a weird grief feeling for an actually published book where you're like, I did the thing, I got the thing, but I was unable to enjoy it and I have all of these feelings attached to it. I think for me especially, it's not simply because it's more fresh for me, but I think that when you are, when it's a published book that you're grieving, especially if it's any of the reasons I talked about, and it could be multiple of the reasons I talked about, like, I'll be honest, my feelings about my second book aren't just about my mom. It's a lot of things. And it, it comes up repeatedly. And it, it, it kind of, in many ways, doesn't stop coming up. I'm, I'm sure it will get better with time. But I think a huge part of the grief that a lot of authors can relate to, again, why I want to talk about, is it's that feeling if you're basically anyone but the big breakouts who will never have to worry about being weeded off the bookshelves, who don't have to worry about the book bus cycle moving on from them in six months, a year, two years, whatever. Most of us are in that boat and I just think it's like the continual grief of realizing this is a natural part of kind of the life cycle of many published books that it's really easy to feel invisible, the imposter syndrome flares up and it's the, the feeling of kind of you don't generally speaking get a do-over once something has been published and it didn't quite go the way that you had hoped or dreamed. And I guess don't we always hope and dream that a book breaks out but it's different book to book and I think that kind of what you need to grieve is going to be relative. Um, 
So for me, as I've already stated many times, for me it is my second book and I think it's just, uh, the Goodreads one was me, where I feel it is way better than my debut and if it just doesn't matter. And, and this is, so we're getting into like, what do you do with these feelings of grief? So one of the things I try to do all the time, but then you still like battle the nebulous feelings, but what is grief if not really complicated? Focus on the small wins. And I, I think that's really, really important. And it can make some books easier than others to deal with this. I mean, hopefully you don't have to grieve too many books. Um, I guess there's always a, a, a thousand little deaths, but um, focus on the little wins. So with that book specifically for me, it's actually sold better than it has any right to given the timing of when it was released and how little marketing it got. And that is a little win for me. That is something that makes me really happy. Does it disappoint me slightly that for some reason, a book I don't think is as good, my debut, has a lower rating on Goodreads. Yes, it bothers me, but I also know in my heart that ultimately what matters is how I feel about the book. And I am proud of that book. And I think it's better than my debut. And then I also go, it's really common, regardless of what someone's second book is like, whether it's better or worse than their debut, for the debut to do better than the second book. It's second book syndrome. And actually this whole like grieving a book, it is, I'm here for you, all people with second books. This is super common for a second book, The Sophomore Slump. Happens all the time, that they're the hardest to write. They very often get go under the radar and aren't as appreciated as we wish they would be. And I am actually here to tell you, it does and can get better. Uh, my experience on my third book is so much better. And actually, this is the other thing I recommend you do with the caveat of this isn't easy to do. When you have these kind of grief feelings over a book. Um, I mean, hopefully they don't hit too early and overwhelm you because I have two to-dos that you, if you need to take space and take time off from writing, do it. I mean, cause grief is grief and you need to process grief however you need to process grief. And that it can be a legitimate way to process grief. But honestly, my work on something new, work on something new, focus your energy on a new hope because every book, presents a new opportunity. Of course it can present a new opportunity to face rejection and upset, but eventually it will get better. So for me, I basically, as soon as the writing was on the wall, this is before The Stars We Steal even came out, but I was like, this isn't gonna go the way that I want it to go. Mom, grief, all sorts of stuff. Uh, was not a lead title. The, the quagmire of YA sci-fi. Didn't even know the, about the pandemic yet, but I had the Ivies and the Ivies, for, first it was the focusing on finishing it, then it was the focus on getting it on submission. This was all part of my grief process actually. <laughs> this all happened after my mom died. Is that healthy? Probably not. And then it sold. And it was focusing my energies on that book. Now mind you, it is a cycle because there were disappointments with the Ivies too, which just happens. We're always going to be somehow disappointed in what we hope something does versus what it does. But focus on the small wins, very, very important. But um, the Ivies was my light at the end of the tunnel and it's what got me through the majority of my book grief for the second book. I'm still like lightly bummed, but clearly I'm okay enough to talk about it now. So yeah, like my biggest tip, like you have to focus on the next thing. That next thing, this is another like tip, that whole like taking a break, like not doing this whole thing for a while because of book grief, uh, this could also involve a pivot. Uh, get back into writing, but maybe part of the book grief is tied to traditional publishing and what's going on here. I have friends who their kind of response to this has been to look into self-publishing. You need to do whatever you need to do to find the joy and the hope in books again, creative outlet, whatever that means. Heck, maybe it's like, I'm not gonna write books for a while. I'm gonna knit or I'm gonna focus on this other thing. You need to do whatever you need to do to kind of like push yourself through the process. And then other kind of tips, I mean, they're double like, just on the theme of do whatever you need to do, whether this is the most sage advice or not, I don't care. Don't promote the book if you don't wanna promote the book. If promoting the book and faking it until you make it, makes it worse, don't do it. She says, I basically, for the mo I did I did the bare minimum that I felt I could emotionally handle. And then I pieced out and that is okay. And that is part of my grief process because I felt 
and I still feel it would have made my grief process for that book worse if I had desperately tried to hawk it everywhere to diminishing returns without the publishing support that I needed. That would have made me more sad about my book. And I have zero regrets. The other thing I have zero regrets about that I generally recommend, this is just like a self-care tip, but uh, I think it can help with book grief, pull back from social media. Because I think what really contributes to book grief, or can really contribute to book grief, it is comparison syndrome. It is FOMO. Because remember, most people only use social media for positive things and promotion. Seeing other people put all that stuff about their books, especially if the reasons you're grieving have to do with competitors in the market or bad timing, just don't be on social media. If being on social media specific platforms or what have you is going to make your book grief worse, step on back. You have to do whatever you have to do to heal. Which brings me to the next thing. Uh, this is a dual one. Be careful who you complain to about book grief. And this is just, that's just good grief advice, period. Uh, though there's an extra edge to book grief because, I mean, you would hope most people wouldn't begrudge you grieving the loss of a loved one, like a person. I guess you'd be surprised. But when it's book grief, some people won't be particularly gracious about you if you vent your feelings about book grief because you're supposed to be so grateful for having what other people don't have, which yes is true. So choose your audience wisely. Make sure you have that tight support network of friends. Maybe this is having a candid conversation with your agent so they know how you're feeling. But I personally found like what helped me the most was friends of mine, particularly critique partners who had read the book, who were kind of with me through the process, who I hope like it, <laughs> but who could like kind of just like validate my feelings and like, it was, I knew wouldn't judge me for how I was feeling. So it's important to have those people. And this, I guess this, this ties to like, be careful who you vent to and social media. Be really, really careful about venting this on social media. As much as I want us to be more transparent about this thing, you have to be really, really careful because it can blow back on you if you're what I call the Eeyore author, where you won't stop complaining about your publishing disappointment publicly. Once or twice is okay, especially every so often there's a wonderful cleansing, you know, transparency trend on social where people will speak openly about publishing disappointments and we love to see it. But just be very careful of being that person who complains a lot. Because as I mentioned, it can just be a bad look. Like people get really like bitter and mean if you're complaining when you're not supposed to complain. But also that thing I said about focusing on the wins, that really is important to pull yourself through it. Because you won't pull yourself through it if you wallow forever in what might have been. You have to try to be healthy about this whole grieving a book thing and try to find ways to move on. So that's just my personal pro tip only because I have seen a couple of authors where it just seems to be a part of their brand <laughs> to be a little too transparent too often about how they were screwed over by publishing on a book. I totally get the feeling of grieving a book. I just think you have to be really careful and circumspect. But that said, in conclusion, um, you are not alone. This is weird. It is so weird. Like when this happened to me, I was like, what is happening to me? I knew I was sad about my mom, but then it really crept up on me how unhappy I was about my book publishing. So weird. Um, grief is grief is one of the strangest things I've ever gone through, honestly. And clearly, I'm at two and a half years now uh, from the grief, not from the book. And I, like, I can like joke about it and have some levity. It continues. It's not over. But it, grief is so so strange. And so I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. If you have gone through this, if you do go through it, um, rally those support networks, work on another thing. That really is my number one because every book is a new opportunity for good things or more disappointment. But it's better to try than not to try, uh, basically is how I feel about it. 
But yeah, as I said, even if there were relative disappointments to the Ivies, and I have to like, it's like a mini grief, like, because you always have to move on from a book. That's the thing I mentioned at the beginning. That is natural, that it's done, and it's out, and you have to write the next one, and think about the next one, and it becomes this like cycle of always focusing on the next thing. But that's also one of the best ways to move forward and get through. But it does get better, so I hope this was helpful. Let me know down below in the comments, have you grieved a book? Uh, uh, do you have any tips yourself for how to get through this? Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I will make more videos where I'm weirdly transparent about feelings and publishing. Like this is a feelings channel now. Because um, with distance it's easier to talk about the feelings. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.